I haven't been to a junk store during most of the pandemic, for what I would think are obvious reasons. Things are improving, though. I'm fully vaccinated and inoculation rates are going up pretty quick here. And since I actually needed to find a couple things at the Goodwill and the local e-way store, I decided to take a little extra time and see if there's anything interesting. I checked the media section out of pure habit, but the only thing I found was the largest number of copies of Kill Bill I've ever seen at one time. The monitors at Goodwill, unsurprisingly, are the same monitors they had like nine years ago. Like, they've got four three panels here and that sort of thing. Now, the sharp here is actually something very interesting. Well, I say that, but interesting is a strong term. It's an EDTV display, enhanced definition television, and this was sort of like an in-between point between standard definition television and, like, full HGTV. Uh, I think it was for, like, uh, like 480 progressive standard def broadcasting i don't know if it ever got used for anything but um, the only time i ever saw it was on a, a massive like 37 inch widescreen crt i had it's like 200 pound behemoth that i just about broke my back carrying up to my apartment and desperately tried to use as a computer monitor so that's what edtv means to me so it's really comical seeing it again and remembering just how disappointing that thing was the other tvs here are again relics from bygone eras i mean some of these i don't know maybe they're not that old but obviously we've got the incredibly cheap you know built-in vhs player crt televisions and then we've got there's actually a plasma display down there um and then just some some basic like 20 to 30 inch lcds I, i'd be surprised if they even do 1080 there's still just a basic vcr here uh there's the i think it's a mickey mouse television more CRT televisions, the CRT boombox. I don't know where Goodwill's getting these things. Like, I, I don't even know who still has these. It's like they have a massive warehouse somewhere where they just keep millions of them so they can keep their, their shelves stocked forever. It's amazing. Here, uh, there's a really ancient flatbed scanner. I wouldn't be surprised if that was either parallel or SCSI. And then a fax machine. And I was going to walk away from it. And I'm like, hey, wait, I actually need a second fax machine. I have way too many floppy disks, otherwise I actually would have been excited by finding some fresh ones. Found a couple of these Panasonic phones that turned out to be for like proprietary digital PBXs instead of uh, like VoIP phones. Found this really kind of pretty looking GE telephone. Decided, you know, I better get a cart. Then almost instantly found this calculator here which looks like it's in the same sort of lineage as that big orange one I did a video on a very long time ago. So, indeed, a cart was got. Wasn't expecting that on my first trip back to Goodwill in like a year and a half. In goes the calculator, in goes the phone, and in goes the fax machine. Technically, this is also a fax machine, but it's one of those brother multifunction devices. It's way too big for me. I found a Linksys ATA, which I ignored, but then I found a Vonage, which turns out to be a Grandstream ATA. And that's actually a lot more interesting. I don't have an HT802, so that goes in the cart. Now here's something though, that there is a cell phone, it's uh, what people call a bag phone. I've ignored a lot of these before, but uh, this one might actually be useful to me, so it goes in the cart. I almost ignored this, because I could tell it was just, you know, an iMac keyboard, but my brain was like, wait a minute, something's not right here. Someone painted this. Like, I thought maybe this was a keyboard that was sold with blank keys, but no, someone actually painted these keys black and white. And... At first, I didn't know what was going on, but it vaguely looks like it could be a piano keyboard layout. So I wonder if somebody was using this instead of getting an actual MIDI piano keyboard. I've talked before about, like, the Goodwill malaise, and it, it hasn't changed. Most of the stuff they're selling is still from, like, 2002, or it's at least the absolute bottom-of-the-barrel garbage. They're also just mostly out of stock. Here's an exceptionally high-quality power supply. Uh, we make world full power. I have not seen this Taiwanese and ATX power supply in a very long time. I almost passed this over, but this is a telephone handset amplifier, and I might actually be able to use that. That's actually kind of cool, so that goes in the cart. There's some more absolutely ancient scanners here. I think this one's probably USB, but the one below it... Yeah, that one might be scuzzy or parallel. So yeah, really just a few things here and nothing too terribly promising. On my way back to test them, I stumbled across this. I don't know how I missed it the first time. This is the widest boombox I've ever seen. It's just gigantic and incredibly filthy, and it, it looks like the cheapest thing in the world. I, I hate it to death. 
Now, unfortunately, no matter what I did with this uh, fax machine, all it would say is paper set error. I actually opened it up and made sure the paper was threaded correctly. It uses thermal roll rather than, than plain paper. Uh, it's definitely threaded correctly, so something's fundamentally broken in this thing, which is a bummer. I could really use another fax machine, and it would have been nice to have a thermal paper one instead of a plain paper one. But, oh well, no dice. Sad news also abounds uh, with the calculator. I was able to uh, disassemble it here in the store, fortunately, because that's how I discovered that, in addition to being very dirty, the belt drive from the motor is gone. That used to be like an organic rubber belt, and it's, it's gone, and I'm not good at sourcing those, so this thing I would never have been able to get working. It's also turbo disgusting, sorry for that. So ultimately, I only got a few things here, uh, but I guess that beats the last time I went. I went and checked out after that, but uh, in the checkout line I saw these in the collectibles case. Uh, this seems to be an IMAX movie about the Columbia Space Shuttle, and the other one appears to be a classroom laser disc. These are always interesting. So after that I headed over to RePC, uh, since I hadn't quite found what I was looking for at the Goodwill. By the way, I'm still double masking and probably will be for quite some time. RePC's been doing so-so during the pandemic, unsurprisingly. Um, they do still get interesting stuff. This is an ultrasound machine. The bummer about these is, as cool as they potentially are, with the huge trackballs and sliders and whatnot they usually have, uh, what they're almost invariably missing is any of the ultrasound pendants, without which you can't really do much with them. RePC also gets, like, really old televisions, but they usually don't put them out unless they're actually something interesting, like this uh, actual 1080p plasma display. That's that's actually cool for someone, but fortunately the rest of their TVs are usually a lot more modern than that. I opened this expecting it to be empty, but it was not empty. This thing is just a great big RGB LED pack for DJs. Like, you put it on the ground and it's, it's meant to just shoot light straight up. It's DMX controlled, so you can make it part of a larger light production. Uh, and for some reason, it's battery powered. I don't know much about live production. Uh, it seems odd that somebody would be doing a DJ set somewhere and not have 110 volts available, but maybe that's a common thing. Uh, at any rate, uh, however, the batteries in these are dead. Um, the front of the lens says battery failure on it. And I spoke to the manager, and he told me a whole bunch of them had dead batteries, uh, so he was only able to test the ones that had working batteries. So I don't know if this one worked, but in addition, apparently these are worth quite a bit as spare parts. So as much as I wanted one as like an accent light for my studio, uh, it just wasn't in the cards, sadly. I didn't even get to turn it on and see if it would blast my retinas out. Bummer. They've had this TV sitting here for probably like eight months. I'm not sure why it's not for sale. Uh, it's not that much of an artifact, but uh, maybe they just like how it looks on the floor. Now, I'm no kind of radio person, but this thing kind of looks like a cheap radio and just sort of a nice-looking cabinet. And, of course, it's got one of these turntables in here that I, I would be afraid to ever put a record on. I think the oldest turntable I've ever seen that I respected was from the 70s. I don't collect vacuum cleaners, but not for lack of desire, because look at this thing and tell me you don't want one. It just looks like a 1970s hotel room in Vegas. It looks like people have done cocaine straight out of the nozzle here. I mean, look at all the burl wood and the fake brass everywhere. I guess this thing is a rainbow, which I've never heard of. But man, they, they sure went for the fake swanky look, didn't they? I found this Logitech Scan Man here, and I got really close to buying it, but $35 was just a bit much. It is a parallel port model, which is neat, but eh, it's not that neat. Another thing I really badly wish I had the room to collect was typewriters. They're just so big and so useless to me, but of all the typewriters I want to collect, all of Eddie's are up there. They've got the most interesting keys. Every single angle on them is just, like, beautiful Italian design. Everything all of Eddie made had a look to it, and I don't know if this is actually any good. I wouldn't be surprised if it's not actually a very good typewriter, but visually speaking, it is extremely good. The big as-is section at RePC, where they put the stuff that just defies categorization, used to be the most interesting thing uh, when I went in there, but I think since they haven't been getting a whole lot for a long time, or it's just picked clean, there hasn't been anything really exciting back here. It's all just kind of bits and pieces that I don't think anybody's ever going to want to buy. 
This section always feels like it should be the most interesting one in the store, but I rarely find anything I want here. Point of sale touchscreen systems, those are kind of interesting. Uh, there's all the various like label printers and whatnot that I have no use for. And then all this network gear, it seems like it could be really cool, but in practice, um, there's like ancient firewalls, ancient Juniper SRX uh, routers, and like really ancient Cisco switches that don't even have PoE. So really nothing. Now, back in 2017, I went into a Goodwill and found something that looked just like this, this electronic typewriter with a CRT display that had a, a word processor and a, a spell checker and stuff. And I thought maybe that this was literally the one that I found, that someone had bought it and then years later had dropped it off at the RePC. But when I went back and checked my old YouTube video, I found out it was a completely different model. So now I wish that I had actually plugged this one in and tested it because I have no idea what it was really like. But it's also $125, so it's not like I was going to buy it anyway. I'm no different than many nerds in that little thermal printers just excite me for some reason. I have no idea why. I've probably owned 20 in my life, never done anything with them. So I couldn't help but look at this one, but I, I just, I've got no use for it. So anyway, I headed home after that, but that's not the end of this video. In the past, when I did my Goodwill videos, um, I just sort of stopped and was like, oh, someday I'll show you these things uh, in another video. And then I never did. So I'm going to actually do a, a quick sort of postmortem because chances are I'm only going to mess with these for a few minutes and then we'll I'll probably give them back to the Goodwill eventually. Uh, so I'd like you to see them before that happens. So let's get this stuff out. All right, so I got a component cable with audio because I've been doing some stuff with component lately. Um, I don't want to spill the beans too much, but I've got some HD component stuff that's going to be pretty interesting once I get it fully working. Uh, and then this guy here I got just because it looked good like, it's just a really nice-looking phone, this GE here. But because I got it, I realized I can actually test this handset amplifier. So I'm curious to do that. And um, I grabbed this Vonage device, so I can probably get this working right now. I've got this. I've got a source of USB power, because this is the funny thing, actually. I've got several analog telephone adapters that look just like this, except they all run off of external 5-volt, about 2-amp wall warts. This one, on the other hand, takes USB. My first thought was, well, maybe this plugs into your, your PC and then you can use it as sort of a, um, like maybe it shows up as a USB audio device and you can use a, a, a real phone handset to have VoIP calls, but that doesn't make any sense. I'm sure they didn't modify it that deeply from the HD802 you can just buy off the shelf, which doesn't do any of that nonsense. An item that I didn't actually get video of because I grabbed it at the last second, this is the TVU Gold Card which is fun because the only gold card I knew of in a, in a PC card format was the Orinoco gold card, which is like an early Wi-Fi. Um, and I think even pre-Wi-Fi. But this one is, uh, this one's actually a scan converter. And I haven't read the manual for it yet. Uh, but actually, Focus Enhancements made this. And Focus was all about, was, maybe is, I don't know if they're still around. Maybe they are. But Focus's whole thing in the 90s was making uh, devices for converting well, they did other stuff, but they also made a lot of devices for converting a laptop or, or a PC to be displayed on a, a standard definition, like composite video projector. And I think that's just what this does. So at first, when it said scan converter, and it was a PC card, and then it had these jacks on it. I thought, okay, you plug your, your composite signal in here, and this is a, t a TV capture card, probably just like a, a frame sampler rather than a live capture card. But then I looked at it a little longer, and I realized it says scan converter. And scan converter and capture card are not the same thing. But in addition, it also has this. And I realized what I think you do with this card is you plug this into the side of a laptop and it, it, it's, it's not a PC card. All it does is suck power off of the PC card bus. And then you plug this into the laptop's VGA output. And then you plug this into your TV. And this lets you, this downscales the laptop for, for use on like a composite uh, video input on a projector or something. So I think this literally has no reason to go in the machine except for convenience this I, i'm pretty sure this could be an external box um that doesn't have any attachments other than power and then these so i think i've got something here it takes pc card i i think i can try this out i'll see what i can do also just real quick you know since i haven't done a like here's the weird stuff i've gotten at the thrift store uh video in a while this thing i don't think this ever featured in a video basically this is a raspberry pi but i think pre-raspberry pi so it's a little tiny, like, ARM-based computer. It's almost the same size as a Raspi, and it has a lot of the same ins and outs. It's got HDMI, audio, USB, um, but it's also got VGA. It's got um, eSATA, which is fun. 
Uh, and then it has, uh, in addition to the USB ports, it also has this guy here, this micro USB port. And I think that's, um, I think that's a downstream port for like treating this thing as a client device rather than a host device. I'm not sure. But also since it's a test bed unit of some kind, it has a raw JTAG port that's actually labeled on the outside. You ever seen that before? That's fun. I like that. And then a full size SD card. Never seen that on a, any kind of microcomputer. They always have, well, normally I just don't see an SD card slot on anything other than the Raspi and it's its boot drive. Uh, this thing actually, I don't know that I've had this thing open, um, but it's pretty straightforward. It's not terribly exciting. Um, it just has a built-in like onboard flash. Um, it's got a copy of Ubuntu on it, you know, like you'd expect. The most interesting thing about it is just that for some reason, they designed it so that the power supply is this slide off unit that just, um, you know, this is just like 110 to, uh, to 12 volt adapter, or maybe it's, it's five, I guess, maybe, because there's a, this jack here is labeled center positive five volt DC. So I'm guessing it's a five volt output. As you can see, it disintegrated on me. But anyway, this actually, when I got this, I had another one of these slide off AC plates and you could actually set this thing up with a, a direct plug. So you could actually hook this thing up and then hang it directly off a wall outlet. And I don't really know, I don't know if this company was angling for like an IOT sort of thing and they wanted to demonstrate, hey, this thing is so compact and, and whatnot, it, uh, you know, so fully integrated, you can actually just make it a wall unit. And obviously it would get smaller if you took out a lot of these extras, but I think they just wanted to demonstrate that it could be an all-in-one unit. I don't know. I think I looked it up at some point, but I just want to get this thing off my desk, so I'm not going to go do deep, deep research on it. You can. It's from Global Scale Technologies, and it's called a D2 plug. Good luck. Good luck. All right, let's see if this thing will fire up off of my laptop here. Well, that's booting. Uh, this guy here, my hope with this is that this is an amps-based cell phone rather than like uh, GSM or some early proprietary technology. I'm not familiar with all the early cellular technologies. But if it's amps, then I know I can get a software-defined radio package for Linux that'll actually let me use this thing. It would be really cool if that happened. <laughs> I don't think the likelihood is high. Um, I looked up the product listing for this in like a catalog and I couldn't figure out exactly what it was. It just said, first cellular phones. So I guess this was at a time when there was only one meaningful sense to cellular, which I think might have been amps. I'm not sure. So my fingers are crossed, but it'll be a while before I can do anything with it anyway. Okay, let's see if this guy will start up. Okay, we got a power light. That's good. Does this thing have a speakerphone? Doesn't seem to. Huh, kind of surprised by that. I guess those weren't universal. Okay, now with a lot of these, you'll get something, like some kind of tone, as soon as you plug them in. I've never used this specific model, so let's see what happens. Oh, okay, it's got a little voice message. Your internet cable is not connected. Your internet cable is not connected. Well, honestly, I don't need to make any calls with it to actually test this, because all I wanted to do was see how this guy here worked, and uh, that little audio recording is good enough. I'm just going to unplug this here, plug it into... Wait a minute. Which one's the in, which one's the out? Oh, hey, this takes a battery. Oh, right, duh, of course. What am I thinking? There's no... um, On the actual phone line itself, there's talk battery, which is a 48-volt... Um, power that you can draw, you know, a few milliamps off of. But the connection between the handset and the phone itself, that one does not have any power on it. It's just raw audio. So uh, this amplifier takes a 9-volt battery. And also, it looks like it was made per the battery well here in 1991. It's actually later than I expected. I would have pegged this at uh, mid-80s. All right, we got our Amazon Basics battery because uh, I'm a good little worker and I buy from the company store. I work for Amazon. I don't know why I said it that way. All right, uh, the only indicator on here is a low battery indicator. <laughs> uh, I guess I'm going to have to read the box, or maybe even the manual, to figure out... Wait a minute. Oh. Blah! Crusty. Ooh. I have a in intense phobia of mold, and that looked like mold to me at first, and I just <laughs> instinctively threw it away from myself. Well, I'm going to throw it away now. Well, anyway, there's no um, manual in here, so I'm not sure which of these holes is for the input and which one's the output. Duh, what am I thinking? This one needs to go into the phone because you wouldn't want this hanging off the handset while you're using it. What am I thinking? This plugs in here. This guy goes in here. And then the only other control here is there's a volume control. And then on the side, there's an auto and manual. I'm guessing the auto is like auto gain control. So if I just slam it and then pick this up, 
it should be loud as hell. Your internet cable is not connected. Yeah, that's considerably louder than it was. Yeah, it had some decibels. Let's try auto mode. Your internet cable is not connected. Well, I'm not sure what auto does. Doesn't seem to affect it. All right, well, that was that. So this thing probably works. Now, the fact that it's Vonage branded means I might not be able to get this to work for just any purpose. I'm not going to go through the mess of configuring it right now. Um, but if it's locked to Vonage, then, you know, I just wasted $3. But, hey, you know, you win some, you lose some. Going back to this phone for a second. Uh, yeah, it's not half bad. It's got It's got a decent feel to it. You know, it's relatively cheap. This is definitely sort of um, Malay's era telephone. Uh, nobody cared about <laughs> about phones at this point, um, but it still it looks nice. Um, the smoked acrylic that looks good. I don't know if it actually makes it easier to read your your saved phone numbers now that I think about it. I guess if you're an older person, that sort of actually makes this phone a lot objectively worse. That's fun. The feel of the buttons is is pretty pleasant, and it's got a hold switch. You know what more can you ask for? Nothing else really about it. Wall hangable, and then if this guy comes off, that's going to be for putting it on a desk, I'd guess. No. This has feet on it, so I guess that's just to hide the cable, I suppose? Oh! Oh no! Oh no, this thing is cheap as hell! It's got a permanently attached cord. You'd have to disassemble it to get the cord out. I'll bet it's like actually soldered onto the board or, or it's under screw tabs or something. So yeah, actually um, a cheaper phone than I had thought, even, even knowing it was cheap. God, a permanently attached cord. What kind of monster? Does an RJ12 really cost that much? The final thing I got was that pair of laser discs I showed you. Let's go take a quick look and see what's on those. I started with the uh, video discovery one. It's clearly an educational title. It's pretty clean. That's not surprising though. Laser discs I see are, are usually pretty much sparkling clean. I think everyone takes really good care of them. Now, I'll warn anyone who's sensitive to flashing, this is about to get very flickery, so look away. This is a type of disc that was very common in classrooms that stores one reference image per frame uh, for the entire runtime of the disc. So there's thousands and thousands of images on here, and the idea is that the teacher would just advance to the one that they're interested in and then press pause, because Laserdisc could be paused without any jitter. And then you could just sit there and talk about it and then step forward frame by frame through the remaining images. Or, instead of using the uh, play and pause controls, you could just use this sheet of barcodes uh, that came with the disc. If you had the uh, right kind of player that had a, a barcode scanner, you could scan one of these and it would take you right to the chapter or specific frame that you're interested in. Uh, the thing that I'm most curious about, this was not uncommon in educational laser discs, but I wonder if it went on to be used in other later technologies. Like, were there DVD players maybe that also had this barcode interface? I think I've seen rumblings of that sort of thing, and I'd be really interested to get one. Next up is this IMAX disc about the space shuttle. Now, my assumption is that this is called IMAX because this is actually a laser disc conversion of something you could see in an IMAX theater at some point. And maybe that explains why the footage is so strange. Um, pardon the reflection from my girlfriend's monitor there, but the whole laser disc is just these little tiny video windows like this, sometimes uh, two up or three up, and then they'll suddenly just pop into full screen. But most of the time you're looking at little video windows. I don't know what this would have looked like in an actual IMAX theater experience. Maybe it looked really cool. You know, they just couldn't figure out a way to translate it into a laser disc, but it's very strange to look at here, and I'm not really sure what I'm supposed to be getting out of it. All right, now finally, I want to test this guy here. Uh, so I've got one of my PVMs here, and then I'm going to go ahead and use this guy. This is the Fujitsu Stylistic, which has been in the background of my last like 10 videos people keep asking me what it is it's a 486 tablet pc um runs like windows 3 actually i think it has windows 95 on it uh it actually works perfectly only problem with it is i don't have a working pen this thing i don't think is any good it doesn't have a stylus but i'm pretty sure it doesn't work anyway i think i had a stylus for it at one point it still didn't work and finding these pens for this specific model is incredibly difficult uh, but it is a perfectly functioning computer so i'll go ahead and plug this guy in. It also came with this custom little outboard laptop keyboard, which is super cute. And indeed, it does have a PC card slot into which we can install this bad boy. Also, I'm realizing its hard drive is missing. I think I have that in a drawer, though. There we go. This is a little, like, uh, 1.8 or, or 2 inch, uh, 260 meg hard drive, which shockingly, after all these years, is still working. At least last I tried. We're going to find out in a moment here, aren't we? guess I should probably just uh, put this thing in its stand. All right, and while that's booting, uh, 
on the side here. Here we go. I do have a VGA port. I don't know if it's active. It's possible you need to get into the BIOS to configure it. Oh, that's right. You hit like a function F6 and that toggles the external display. Well, that's a bummer. Apparently I hosed my Windows install on here. Huh, I don't remember doing that. Well, it might still work to test the scan converter. Let's see. Hmm, no sync. Well, either this doesn't do what I thought it did, or it needs special drivers, or it won't scan convert down to text mode refresh rates. Ah, bummer. Yeah, I looked this up and I, I couldn't find this specific thing, uh, but I found the uh, PCI version of the same thing, and yeah, it actually does require drivers and like a control panel, and it also looks like uh, maybe it only goes down to 640 by 480 so I guess I'm going to have to actually find the drivers somehow, and it looks like they're unobtainium, so maybe this thing's just a paperweight now. So most of my finds, purchased or unpurchased, didn't really work out the way I hoped they would, which is pretty normal for a trip to Goodwill. I think most of the stuff I've gotten before ended up going back to the Goodwill without really even getting used, because most of it was kind of crap, but hey, it's the journey that counts, right? I mean, really... Just going in there, looking around at things, learning stuff, discovering what weird little things are, and then realizing they're totally useless. And either putting them back on the shelf or taking them back to the store because you bought them before you realized they were useless. That's the Goodwill experience. That's all I wanted. Hope that's all you wanted too, and hopefully we will do more of these once things are a little better. Uh, the pandemic restrictions are still, you know, probably keeping a lot of stuff from showing up in the Goodwill and I'm hoping that when this is all over that I'm going to see a lot more stuff start coming in and it'll actually be fun to go there again see wild things you've never seen before, like the old times. If you enjoyed this, please subscribe to my channel. Maybe turn the notifications on as well. It makes it a lot easier for me to let you know when I've actually put out a new video, especially when it's a while in between videos getting put out. If you really enjoyed this, consider subscribing to my Patreon, which is how I afford to buy things like this that usually, usually actually work so I can show them to you. For everybody who has subscribed to my Patreon, thank you so much for supporting me. Here's the names of some of the people who have done that. And for everybody else, thanks for watching. Wait, wait, I spoke too soon. There's a picture there. I had to hit uh, function F6 a couple more times, but now it's taken the uh, Windows boot error message and it's very clearly scan converting it incorrectly since the uh, lowest resolution it sports is 640 by 480. It's trying to uh, make like 320 by 270 hertz uh, fit into that refresh and it's not working, but it's still giving it the college try. So if I could get a graphical mode working on this thing, I'm pretty sure this thing really would work the way I said, where it just... It just does it. It's just siphoning power off the machine and, and just running in full auto mode. And you don't really need to have any software to make it work. So I don't have any of my other laptops um, with a, a PC card slot out of storage right now. They're all packed away. So when I have an opportunity, I'll pull one out and I'll, I'll put this thing through its paces and see what it can do. Glad I turned out to be correct about this after all.